Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. We are your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus and Ushamut Zide Pinkavichin. We've been mastering secrets of organ playing for more than 20 years and sharing them on this blog since 2011. On this show, which we create from our home in Vilnius, Lithuania, we strive to help you grow in every area of organ playing, including practice, technique, repertoire, sight reading, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory, harmony, and many others. Our hope is to help you become a complete musician, or what we call as total organist, a program which we have created to help you reach your dreams faster than you would do on your own. If you are new here, we invite you to subscribe to receive free updates of this blog at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video on how to master any organ composition and 10-day organ playing mini chords. And now let's go to the podcast for today. Hi guys, this is Vidas. And Tosha. Let's start episode 303 of uh, Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This question was sent by Michael and he writes, Hi Vidas and Osher. Thank you for your recent email to which I am now responding late. I apologize. My dream for my organ playing is that I would like to apply for and be admitted into a doctoral program in organ performance. I am currently pursuing a master's degree in organ performance. At this time I cannot think of three hindrances to my dream, but I can think of one in particular that is proving to be and has always proved to be a great problem for me. I am very shy about people hearing my practicing the organ, the repetitions, make mistakes, etc. that attend the process of learning a piece of music. I am a very introverted person, which I have found is not a very common personality trait amongst organists, at least not amongst the organists I know personally. I believe that my fear of people hearing my practicing may at least partially stem from their shyness and introversion and perhaps lack of confidence in myself, worrying that people may think I am not a skilled organist if they hear how painstaking practicing can be, and sometimes how tedious the process of learning a piece of music can be, for me at least. Even at the university, though, where I am surrounded by other graduate music students who understand exactly what I am experiencing with practicing, even there I cannot bring myself to practice on the practice organ, which makes things very difficult for me sometimes, since the practice organ is the organ on which I perform when I receive my weekly lessons, and I really need to play it regularly to continue to be accustomed to its feel and action. What I normally do is practice at the church in the late afternoon or evenings when I know no one will be present to hear my practicing. All of this causes me to waste time and causes me to worry needlessly. I am aware of these things, yet the fear of people hearing me practice has been one with which I have struggled since childhood. Despite the fact that I have been successful enough to work as a church organist, pursue graduate level organ performance studies and compose, I worry that the shyness and introversion, which I believe is the basis or part of the basis of my fear of others hearing my mistakes when I practice, I worry that this will directly harm my efforts to receive an admissions offer in the competitive world world of doctoral studies, perhaps um, because my skills will not be as good as they could be if I practice more regularly. I also worry that my shy personality may indirectly harm my efforts to be admitted into a doctoral program since my non-extroverted, non-showmanship personality and the music I prefer to play and compose as a result of this personality may make me seem as though I would be less successful as a graduate of the program than would other, another more gregarious, outgoing applicant, and maybe the conservatory would prefer investing in a person like that rather than me, 
since my appearance alone may work against me. Sadly, I have found that a very skilled but introverted organist is often, and maybe even usually, unfavorably compared to an organist who is not as skilled, but who has a very introverted and confident personality. Thank you so much for your SoundCloud podcasts and um, emails. I have found each podcast and email extremely helpful, informative and enjoyable. And I am grateful for your work. Most sincerely, Michael. That's a long story, Osha, but he has a very interesting feedback. Yes, and he has the things that I have never thought about. That... uh, Organists are not usually introvert, right? Well, actually, I think there might be, you know, a wrong view about because I think that many organists are extremely introverts. Mm-hmm. Because if you choose such an instrument, you are probably an introvert because organists spend so much time alone only with, you know, with his or her instrument. Plus, the instrument is hidden from the public. Yes, in most, most. churches. Mm-hmm. So, I think that they're probably a more introvert organist than extrovert. Don't you think so? Let's think about our friends. Hmm. <laughs> Not all of them, obviously. Some of them are more outgoing than others just as in life probably well but let's see let's talk about ourselves have you ever done any psychological tests which determine your personality personality yeah I, I did and so what about this introvert extrovert thing um I don't remember exactly those four four letters what about me but uh, maybe you remember about well I remember some some of it but any every test that I have done showed that I'm extremely introvert person mm-hmm. something like 80 and more percent introvert mm-hmm. so but you know I never thought about that problem that you know somebody will hear me practicing with mistakes Actually, I don't care about it. The more, you know, I care is that I would, you know, play well during my actual performance. Because then it's really important that I would play without the mistakes. So I would like to ask uh, Michael? Michael, yes, if he feels performance anxiety when he during his actual performance. Because mm-hmm. this is the moment when most of, you know, musicians start worrying and get performance anxiety, but not, you know, not afraid of being, you know, heard playing with mistakes during rehearsals. And, you know, another thing is, it is that you usually, especially in America, you have pretty well isolated practice rooms. So if you are alone in a room, nobody can hear you from you no know, outside. Mm-hmm. What he's talking about is studio performance uh, practice, uh, when he has to practice on the organ that uh, his less weekly lessons are held on, probably. Remember in Nebraska? Yes, I remember we had studio, but I wouldn't call it you no know, practice time. It was once held once a week and everybody would play what we learned during a week. Um, so maybe in his conservatory is different. Maybe he doesn't have too many practice rooms, isolated practice rooms. Maybe well, but bit. how can you practice organ if somebody else is practicing something else in the same room? I don't think that people are really sitting in the same room that he is playing there. And you know, Michael, what I could tell you that you no, know, every person is busy with its own life, and you know nobody really cares about 
what you are playing and how many mistakes are you making, especially during your rehearsal time. Everyone is thinking about themselves, right? True. Everyone is egoist in, in yes, a way. Yes, and everybody is thinking about their own mistakes, not yours. So I think you need, you know, need, need not to worry about it. Uh, what I hear in between the lines that he is not writing actually is uh, he Michael might be a perfectionist, perfectionist, right? Yes. Uh, wh- who wants to do everything at the top level, and if he cannot do it at the top level, then he doesn't do it at all. But well, if he wants to, you know, to become a doctoral student, it means he needs to practice every day. And it doesn't matter if he will practice at the university or, you know, in church, he needs to do it every day. Adapt this attitude. Practice no matter what, right? It's a professional attitude. True. You don't have to be paid, actually, to be a professional. It's the, the mindset that matters, uh, right? If you skip practice because of the weather or how you feel, or if you're tired, or you, you know, simply not in the mood, then you are not a pro. And it's okay not to be a pro, actually. I'm not blaming anybody. But anyone who wants to excel in this art, or any other art form, has to adapt an attitude of the pro. I don't know, I never think, do you think it would be matter much, you know... If person who wants to become a doctoral student is extrovert or introvert, how how much can this will be, you know, the deciding point during your admission? Um, I know what you mean, right? There is no discrimination, actually. Mm-hmm. I don't believe anybody would ask him you are introvert? No, no, we don't <laughs> accept introverts, just extroverts. It's not that way, but if he is, you know, because of his um, shyness, practices too little and is not advancing well enough, and when the time comes to, to show his skills during the entrance examinations, then he's not ready, right? True. As well as his peers are. And then that might be a problem. Yes, because, no, if you are thinking about, like, showing yourself bad during interview, that you are too shy to, you know, to talk with people, with, you know, with professors, well, do all the other things good, because, you know, you need to play wonderful during your audition. Mm-hmm. You need to get good recommendations. And you need to have a really top GPA, grade mm. point average. Because I remember when we were applying for doctoral studies, studies our GPA was, what, 4.0. So in U.S. standards, that's the highest. Mm-hmm. The highest point average. So basically we were very competitive. And then, as I said, you know... Excellent audition and you no know, good recommendations. And then how much can you know the interview harm yourself? Not too much probably. Not too much. You all know all also need to write a essay about your Yes, motivation, motivation. letter probably. Mm-hmm. Not all schools schools requires that but, but some some does. You know, in the end, if we summarize our advice, I think, from from my perspective, is uh, if you want it badly enough, you will overcome your shyness. If you don't want it badly enough, if it's not that important, right? If your shyness is more important, if if uh, if we have others. Uh, see you is more important to you than how you actually see yourself then you will not overcome yourself your your shyness 
I think this this all the problem is more related, you know, and more applicable to teenagers. I think the teenager are at that age where it's really important what others think, and that people really worry gets really worry that nobody would laugh at them and you know sort of not not to show themselves too much to be in that you no know, crowd. But I think at you know mature age and since you no know, Michael is in his master studies so he he is already adult. We don't have to worry so much about others and about what others thinks about us. Don't you think so? I've read a very good book called Ignore Everybody by Hugh McLeod, cartoonist and blogger who started his career while drawing cartoons on the back of the business cards. Mm-hmm. Basically, he he writes down 39 key points about creativity, and one of them, the most important one, is ignore everybody. So maybe we could conclude on that, our conversation yes. too. Ignore our advice to Michael. Thank you, guys. This was with us. And Osha. And uh, remember, when you practice, miracles happen. This blog is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program online, where you will find courses for every area of organ playing, including technique, practice, sight reading, repertoire playing, hymn playing, improvisation, composition, music theory, and harmony, with hundreds of scores and thousands of exercises. Here is what some of the students are saying. Hugh writes, The sight reading course has helped me tremendously. Thank you very much for your essays, courses, and all your help. Robert writes, I found the fingerings, registration ideas, and general comments to be excellent. John writes, I have found your download very helpful. It was really excellent. I have watched some of your teaching videos and when I read your instructions. I try to imagine you are there teaching me. You may feel disappointed that I am two three days behind, but I am a slow learner and I have committed to taking the time to get it right as you say. But the other night my wife commented that she had never heard me play such a detailed melody in the left hand so well. My left hand is generally poor. Robert writes, It has been a great pleasure in my life of having discovered your courses and material as well as the YouTube work of recordings. You have a calm and pleasant way of teaching. Ron writes, Hi Vides and Osha, thank you guys. What a wonderful response to my email note to you. You've got me right, and I feel you understand my level of playing. Yes, at home and lucky that I have an organ for that reason. I am paying attention to this, and I am going to try this haha no longer secret model. Yes, and I love Caesar Frank too. What is very nice about your blog podcast is that Osha and Vidas are like a Socratic dialogue, and by bouncing things off of each other, so much more information comes out and is expressed. Your comments contain a wealth of information and understanding. I really appreciate this. It is very inspiring and will keep us moving forward. Would you like to receive the same or even better results that our students are getting? If so, join them at organduo.lt slash total dash organist. And of course, you will get the first month free too. You can cancel anytime. Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to receive free updates of this blog, make sure you do that at organduo.lt. By subscribing, you will also receive free video, how to master any organ composition and... 10 day organ playing mini course. This was Vidas and Osha from Secrets of Organ Playing. And remember, when you practice, miracles happen.